Rob Kaplan, now that you're a, a public speaker and a professor and so on, you're better in business, and it makes me wonder how you would go back and do your Goldman Sachs years over again, knowing what you know now. Of course you would, right? Sure. Uh, I'm a little better. You know, I spend a lot of my time still with, uh, in fact, I spend as much time with businesses as I ever have now, and I spend a lot of time with boards, corporate boards, not-for-profit boards, and as a banker, you spend a lot of time in front of boards also. Uh, I'm I'm better strategist now. I'm better framing questions. I'm better at mobilizing a group. I was good, uh, maybe more than good, hopefully, when I was at Goldman Sachs because of the jobs I had running businesses. But I'm, as a professor, you really develop the skill of mobilizing a group, framing a question, getting a group to a consensus, debating an issue, diagnosing an issue with a group, you get a lot better at it because you do it so much. You learn what the right questions are to ask. And uh, so I'm much better at that now, and that's a great business skill. You say that it's more important to frame a question correctly than what the answer is. Well, the nature of the questions you ask is very, very important. So, for example, I could ask a question of a group that I get a yes or no answer, and you wouldn't really find out what they're thinking. On the other hand, if I ask a different question uh, and I said, what's the biggest problem we're facing? What's the biggest thing that's keeping you up at night? Everyone in the room will have an answer to that question, okay? And, in fact, they may have to dig deep and really think about it. And if you get them to talk about that, then you may really zero in on what the problem the business is really having, as opposed to say, do you think we should do this or that? Well, <laughs> that's a question, too, but, but the answer to it is not going to be very revealing. If, on the other hand, you say, what's the biggest thing that's worrying you about, about what we're doing? What's the biggest problem you're having? What's the biggest issue you think we're having? You'll get a totally different answer, but that'll go right to the heart of the issue. And so lots of business people and leaders ask questions, but the nature of the way they ask them, they don't really get at what people are really thinking, and it doesn't unlock the power of the team. And that's what they have to learn to do better. You changed how I look at some things when you explained how no matter what kind of problem someone brings you about their life or their business, your answer is almost always something along the lines of, what's your vision for that business? Yeah. So people tend to come to you with, and I always did this probably too, people tend to come to you with symptoms of a problem, okay? And they talk to you about, you know, I was, I was talking to, I was interesting, I was talking to a, a CEO yesterday. And he was telling me about problems they're having with their people and in some of their businesses. And I know enough about the business to know everything he talked to me about, those aren't the problems. Those are the symptoms, okay, of a bigger problem. The bigger problem is he hasn't had a discussion with his people about what do they do now that's distinctive. What are they trying to do? What's distinctive? And when you force yourself to have that debate, you might find out some of the things that you think are problems right now are not problems at all. It's just par for the course if that's the kind of business you're going to run. And other things that you don't think are problems are huge problems. But it causes you to reframe everything you're trying to do. So the problem is most people start off with a micro issue. And they need to back up first and think, what are we trying to do? What's, what is this business trying to do? And what are the problems we're having in trying to reach the vision for the business? Once you're clear on that, it, it puts everything else in perspective. And you may realize you, you, it, it causes you, it makes it also easier to solve some problems because you realize, oh, my God, this is a terrible problem. We've got to fix this because it corrects the, directly to what we're trying to do. And these other problems actually are more minor. One of the results is you make peace with the fact that if you're going to be the best, you're not going to be the lowest cost. Yeah, you have to make choices. So if I want to be the highest quality maker of blank, and by the way, Apple, you mentioned Apple earlier, they've had to have this debate. You know, Samsung costs dramatically less. Apple was criticized for years. You guys are failing 
to answer the challenge from Samsung on building a lower cost iPhone. They're basically saying, that's not what we're trying to be. We're trying to be positioned someplace else. Our vision for the firm is to have a higher quality and yes, higher price product. And so they ultimately, and today they're now eating Samsung's lunch, but they didn't, the answer was not to be something that they didn't believe in. The answer was to stick with what they're great at, and what they found is there's a big enough market to build an extremely big business doing what they believe, where they think they're distinctive.